Imagine this, you're working at your duty station or your battle station aboard your ship, and suddenly the lights go out. You've got to get to safety on main deck. We're talking positional awareness next on Kidbits. Hi, I'm Tim Nesmith, Ship Superintendent and Education Outreach Coordinator for the USS Kid Veterans Museum, and you're watching Kid Bits. A few months ago, our friends Ryan Szymanski and Libby Jones at Battleship New Jersey made this great film uh, dealing with how do you get off the battleship in the dark. Uh, and in it, they, they blindfolded Ryan, spun him around, disoriented him, and then took him down into the bowels of the battleship. And using his knowledge of the ship, he was able to find his way up to the main deck and out to safety. Um, I told him what a great video it was and how it was just like two instances that I had here on the kid where uh, I had to move around the ship in the dark and in another instance where I was having to track my movement without being able to see. And they both insisted, you need to do a video. You've got practical experience on this. So that's what we're going to do today. Uh, we're going to simulate both of my previous experiences, once with an overnight uh, trying to find a bunch of kids that were below decks when the entire downtown Baton Rouge area had lost power and plunged the ship into darkness, and another instance to where I was injured on the ship and was being taken off the ship, couldn't see, and I was able to track my movement down the main deck and, and know where I was on the ship just by my knowledge of the ship and the sounds and everything uh, that was happening to me. So, so this morning we're joined by Aaron and Brad with Baton Rouge EMS and USS Kid staff member Molly and we are going to simulate what happened to me in 2012 with the stretcher and me being able to tell where I was on the ship based on sounds and my knowledge of where things were on the ship. You guys ready? Yep. All right, let's go. All right, Molly is secured. You ready to go? There we go. So Molly is filming what I would have seen. And we're going to pass under these 40 millimeters. Keep an eye on her inset. You notice this overlap plate. I felt the bump on that. I felt darkness going through this tunnel here. And then a sudden slowdown and a shifting as we go around the 20 millimeters. And more shifting as we go past the torpedo crane. A little bit of darkness, not a lot, underneath this life raft against the morning sun. And this was my big clue in, the big canvas awning at the quarter deck. So I know what's coming next. There's a big bump at the gangway. And then a lot of noise. That grooving gives you a good idea of where you're at. right up until you get to the smooth concrete and then you get lost you have no clues anymore no awnings or shade to block anything and no sounds so at this point i'm waiting for the big thump for an overlap plate at the foot of that observation tower that'll tell me when i'm about to go into the building but the EMS personnel surprised me because they took an immediate lift. And immediately proceeded down the levee to the A7 jet. Where the ambulance was waiting. 
and it was such a smooth ride positive traction and everything keeping me level that I did not even know that I was on the levee on the grass not until I got right here under the jet Trying to figure out where I was, I cracked my eyes and I see white and red of the drop tanks. It is a dark Tuesday night, although you can't tell it by all the lights on the levee. But this is Santiago Hello. and kid staff member Brian. Hello. And they have, or Santiago has, a night vision set of goggles it's an an pbs 14 binocular binocular okay yes. but it sees through night vision excellent so they are going to help me recreate hunting for two little scouts uh as we fumble through the dark below decks in a completely darkened ship you guys ready cool. let's do it all right here we go ow Ladder chain and stepping over the combing, and just to be safe, I'm going to go down backwards. Last step is the bread locker. There's no bread locker. There we go, dumb waiter, and off we go. Okay, should be a steam pipe coming up on my right. That was Brian falling down in the background. Freezer should be coming up on the ice cream machine. Is that my ice cream machine? Oh, there's not. That's the ice cream machine. What the heck was I touching on the other side? Bulkhead, making the corner for the freezer. Hot spot. And going into the scullery. That's a comb, watertight combing, so step up and over. But you have you have the uh, night vision, so you can see what you're doing. There's another post, sounding tube, and watertight combing. And here we go with power supply for the sound amplifier, sonar amplifiers on the right. Should be coming up on a watertight combing. There it is. Have I mentioned how very much I love Ryan Szymanski and Libby Jones for encouraging me to do this craziness? Let's find the table. There we go. There's the stanchion I was looking for. There's another table. I'm having flashbacks right now to looking for those two kids. If those kids are watching this video now at age 30 or 40, you traumatized me. All right. Watertight combing there behind you. Watch out. Stanchion. Second set of bunks. Third set coming up. There we go. And looking for the combing. There it is. All right. Door impedes your walking a little bit. And just like back home on the ranch in the cattle pens, we're getting narrowed in through the chute tight spots on destroyers and there is cold weather storage down underneath us and supplies and the ladder and going up to the chief's mess ow 
not quite yet. Watertight combing. And here we are. Watertight combing. Table. Where's the chair? Here's the chair. And the next table. And the next chair. Should be a door. Yep. Combing. Ow. Open up and over. Mount 50, one hand on room. There's a base for the gun. Toolbox. That's a five inch projectile and that big angled thing. And right in front of me should be the dredger hoist. There it is. Incidentally, for those ship geeks who are watching, this little see-through cover for the hoist came to me via Ryan Samansky and Paul Cora when they were both at the Taney. Stepping through watertight into the chief's area. There's the hatch for officers and another watertight and officer's country. There's a ladder going up in the 52's handling room and second set of staterooms. I should be coming up on the bubbler. Oh, there's the fire extinguisher. If we had a fire, I could actually see. There's the bubbler. Looking for, there's the hatch. Looking for the combing. There's the combing. All right. And there should be a wall in front of me. There we go. Electrical box. Safe, bulkhead, fan controls, ladder. All right. Coming and CIC bulkhead. Anybody can hear picking up on the microphone that battle talk going back and forth, that chatter, that is not something supernatural. Our recording, our timer is just off. There's a watertight combing right here by the small arms locker. There should be a fan motor. There it is. All right, which means... Oh, Electrical switches and the hatch. I can see. We made it out. No injuries. You guys injured? Nope. No? No. No? All right. Success. So positional awareness is very important, obviously, for sailors to be able to get to safety from the interior of a ship in a smoky environment or one of complete darkness. But the Navy gave them a little bit of helping hand because they also put throughout all the compartments, all the rooms, battle lanterns. And these battle lanterns are essentially battery powered flashlights and they scatter them all through the ship. And the batteries for those lanterns, by the way, are charged here in the battery charging room aboard KID on the main deck in the midship's passage. So what does this all have to do with you? Well, you practice positional awareness all the time, whether you realize it or not. If you take a flight on an airplane, then you know immediately at the beginning of flight where the emergency exits are fore and aft and to either side above the wings. You ever notice somebody doing those movements? That's positional awareness. Uh, if you go to the mall or the movie theater, you have the you are here signs that are posted regularly throughout the building and those point you toward emergency exits again positional awareness and if you're in school or at the workplace then you have fire drills on a regular basis and in those situations you move from wherever you're located through the building to an emergency exit to the exterior and there's usually a rally point where everybody gets together and they do a head count and make sure everybody is safe positional awareness so you practice it all the time. I hope that you've enjoyed this episode of Kid Bits. I hope you found it useful. And remember, the USS Kid is a non-funded state agency that receives no 
state or federal funding on a regular basis. To book your next overnight adventure, your next school field trip, or to access our teacher resources, click on the links down below. And remember to like, share, and subscribe our videos. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.